Okay, so today we are going to do another Dear Authors. This is a series where we as readers just get together and chat about what we like and don't like in books. I posted a community post asking about redemption arcs and I'm nervous to do it because I haven't finished Avatar yet, but I am actively reading it and watching it, watching it again. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna talk about this. If you are interested, we have a whole playlist of Dear Authors videos, just readers chatting about books. I'm going to start with the most liked comments and then we'll just pick them. But also, I will probably avoid any comments that just outright say characters' names because I'm trying to avoid spoilers. Um, so more like, here's what we like or don't like to see. Okay, so the, la the, the first, the most liked comment is a name from Avatar. I haven't gotten to that redemption arc. Of course, I know that this person is going to get one because people talk about it all the time, uh, but I have not watched it yet, so I do not have thoughts and I will not put it on the screen just in case anyone hasn't been spoiled for this redemption arc. Oh, more, more Avatar comments. Oh man, okay, maybe I shouldn't have done this. A good redemption arc shouldn't have an and then they were good moment. If you want to embody or emphasize an arc through a big moment, that's fine. But for both protagonists redeeming themselves or villains turning good, there can't be a moment that from then on the character is perfect, makes no mistakes, or is immediately acceptable by those they wronged. In summary, a moment of complete enlightenment, though maybe fun at the time, ultimately cheapens the arc and damages the story as a whole. I fully agree with that. I also don't, and this is kind of, this is agreeing with you, this is just kind of expanding on it, is that it's not fun reading an arc where, like you said, they're fully redeemed and their past actions, they no longer haunt them, there's no longer consequences for them, and it's written in a way that the reader is expected to just kind of get over it. I think the best redemption arcs happen when a character is feeling the weight of what they've done even after it's over and they've become a better person. A good example of that is in the Stormlight archives, I won't name the character, but when we as the readers are supposed to forgive genocide or forgive physical or mental harm towards another character that we follow um, or anyone, if we're just supposed to get over it as soon as they've had a I'm all better now moment, it's really not satisfying. I want to see this character really tormented by what they've done and have to fight through their past as part of their redemption. Whether we're in their perspective or we see it secondhand somehow, that I think it's best if that's part of the redemption because if they just suddenly seem all better and we're expected to go with that, it's really not satisfying because even small things that we do wrong can haunt us. So massive things, um, a lifetime of pure evil should haunt that character for a while while they're finding their new place as a basically new person. That is the most satisfying redemption arc, I think, when you get to see their process of fighting for a better mental state and fighting for forgiveness for themselves, not just fighting to be a better person. Someone who's been awful their whole life being redeemed by one act of good before death. Don't do that. Make them earn it and put in an extended effort to fix their wrongs. I wouldn't call it really a redemption arc if it's one scene right before they die. Um, I have seen that done in a way that I find really compelling. It makes me feel for the villain right before they die, but it doesn't make me consider them redeemed. I do agree that that's not a good redemption arc because at that point it's like, oh yeah, you were sorry for one second when you knew you were about to die. So that gives you a little bit, that gives me a little bit of compassion for you, but I don't, I still view you as a villain because that's all you've ever been. It, it doesn't redeem them enough. It doesn't do enough for them. Um, watching them actually fully become redeemed and, and choose to be good for more than one moment and actually have to fight for that change in life and in mindset is, so satisfying. And someone who just turns good because they didn't know they were the bad guy and they were being lied to and now they see the truth, they're immediately good. That's not sufficient for me. Good point. 
Again, if we can just see their struggle, because if someone's been lied to and like raised to be bad thinking that they're on the good side, first of all, they should have trauma from that. They should have PTSD from that. They should be reckoning with the things that they did because even if they didn't know it was bad, I'm sure they still caused a lot of harm. So they should still be reckoning with it. And two, if they've if they've lived their whole life or a large part of their life believing one thing and then completely shifting that and believing that now what they've been doing has been pure evil, that should that should be a hard shift to make. You should still, I actually was just reading um, The Girl with Seven Names. She, she escaped North Korea and when she got to South Korea, um, she like had deeply ingrained hatred for South Koreans still because it was it was embedded in her mind growing up and even though she was escaping to South Korea she still had mindsets that she had to break free from because it was how she was raised and i think seeing that is a lot more real if if somebody was raised one way realizes it's wrong and then tries to switch they're still going to have deep, deeply ingrained mentalities that they were raised with that they have to choose to change their mind on and that they have to remember, no, that was the lie, this is the truth. One kind of good redemption, give an evil character sufficient reasons for doing what they are doing and give them a desire that lies out of their reach because of the way that they are as a character right now. So if they want to reach their desire, they have to change. Again, I'm not going to read the example because I don't want to put spoilers on the screen, but yes, agree with what you said, don't have anything to add to it. I love when characters are great at first and then they become a hero towards the end. They don't necessarily start bad, but the reader doesn't know what side they're on or if they can be trusted. They do some bad things, but overall they help the protagonist. So I guess the concept is that they are neither good nor bad, they're kind of both, but they end up doing things to help the main character and through that become fully good. I don't think I've ever seen that executed, but that's a really interesting concept. If there is a redemption arc, it needs to be earned. You can't just decide one character is suddenly good now and then expect us to forget slash forgive the horrible things they've done before. I want to see the motivation behind the change and watch the character grow. I 100% agree with this. If you want to make a character truly horrible in the first book and then suddenly turn them into the love interest or the hero or whatever in the second book, you better do some real reckoning and not just, oh, he had an excuse or they had an excuse the whole time because they were protecting their family or that whatever their reasoning is. No, I'm not gonna just get over the literal torture and assault that you did all throughout the first book. I'm not gonna just move forward from that. I need more of an excuse than just, ah, but my intentions were good. No, you better have a redemption, not an excuse. I wanna see you really regret your actions and have a change of heart, not actually they were good the whole time. I'm honing in on something really specific and I should probably stop. Redemption arcs are best when the character does something to prove he has joined them. It's especially satisfying if we see the characters try to redeem themselves over and over until it happens, and when the other characters respond realistically. A major flaw in the arc can happen when it's rushed and the character doesn't feel redeemed. This is a really good point and one that I wouldn't have thought to make is with a really great redemption arc, we need to see the characters responding, not trusting, not believing, that character having to really fight to earn people's respect and trust because they've totally demolished respect and trust before before this moment, before they've changed. And so people shouldn't just automatically accept, oh, you're good now? Awesome, join our side. There should It should be met with a lot of suspicion and a lot of resistance and I think that's a really that's a really good point is to make sure that the side characters or whoever the characters are responding to this redemption appropriately and not just accepting it because the reader is supposed to accept it. I really like that. I like that resistance not only from the character who's being redeemed, not only from their mental state, but also from the people who they've wronged. 
That's a really good point. Comment of the day. Not all villains have to be redeemed. Sometimes they might do one morally good thing and they can still be a wicked person and that's okay. When you do decide to redeem them, please keep in mind that they can't go back and change the horrible things they did. It's not, fa it's not fair to expect all your other characters to forgive them right away or at all. The best redemption arc I can think of, or at least my favorite, features the former villain accepting his mistakes and moving forward to fix them. He spends a long time building trust with other characters, and when they do forgive him, not all at the same time, it's so satisfying. Also, please, 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 please don't do the redemption off page. Let us see the moral dilemmas and metamorphosis. It's good stuff. This is an excellent comment. I think the main thing to take away is to take your time. If a character's redemption is rushed or if it's off page or if we only see a moment of it before they die, it is totally unsatisfying and completely unconvincing for the reader. We want to see the struggle of it. We want to see the fight for it. We want to see the them choosing day after day, action after action, and to see them kind of, if, if somebody chooses to do horrendous things with their life and then they change, it's going to be a hard change. It's going to be a hard change for people to receive, for them to do, for their mental state to change. Even if they really, really want it, it takes time. And to not actually watch that happen, it's not believable and it's not satisfying. We want to see the fight for something that monumental. Take your time, do it over books, do it over an entire book. Just do, give it the amount of time it deserves. Don't make it fast. Pretty much anything in a book that happens abruptly of 180 turn is going to be unsatisfying for a character. But redemption arcs seem to be something that's really, really hard to do. I have seen so many bad ones done and there are so few that I can put on a list of great redemption arcs. I like it when a character's redemption is earned, when they actually struggle for it, especially if the character is being redeemed from someone that took from something that took place in the main story and we as the audience saw the bad thing that they did firsthand as opposed to someone as opposed to something that the character did a long time ago and we're just now being told about it so yeah if you want to do now the best redemption arcs we see the whole thing right we see them be bad and then we see the slow gradual change and fight for good if they did something bad off screen and we hear about it that's not really a redemption that we're going to be invested in. We'll probably accept it, but we won't care that much. But if we do go the good redemption arc way, the satisfying redemption arc way, and we see the character do really terrible things, then we have to, I mean, you have to make it believable, right? They can't, we can't just accept on a snap decision, you're all better now. A redemption arc can be good, but we don't need to see it from every single character. I think they're best when they feel natural and take time. They shouldn't end up perfect after either. Um, so I saw several comments of people saying, don't do this for every character. We don't need it that often. And I do agree, a redemption, a, a redemption arc is really hard to execute and it's something that takes a lot of time to do it well. So it's really frustrating when it feels like an author thinks that they need to just redeem a character because redemption arcs are liked or um, just to make, I don't know, just for funsies. We don't need it from every character. It is something that should be done sparingly because it's something that's so satisfying when it's done well and so frustrating when it's done poorly. So only when it's truly going to be something that is going to be worked at and spent time on, we don't need it that often. I think a good redemption arc features a character who is simply a product of a system they were born into or raised in. They then learn about a different way of thinking that changes what they believe. Somebody who has decided by themselves that a group is evil or that murdering is justified is less likely to garner sympathy. Also, not all character arcs have to be from the bad side to the good side. Let characters become evil too. Okay, so you're talking about, you like it when the hero turns into a villain. I like that too. I really enjoy reading those stories as well. If they're executed well, snap decisions, not exciting. But I also really like the, it was ingrained in me. This is how I was raised. This is what was indoctrinated into me. Uh, I think that that's a very compelling one and one that we can forgive and understand fairly easily. Um, once they kind of grow older and see the other side and realize, wow, what I've been taught my entire life 
was really, really wrong. And then the change, but like I said before, a slow change and when they have to fight for because an indoctrination isn't something that you just snap out of. But I do really like those types of redemptions where it's not necessarily that they decided to be evil, but rather that they were taught to be evil and now they're changing who they are. But I'm really cool with really any kind of redemption beginning as long as them getting to being good is, 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 is well executed. I love when we can see redeemable aspects in a villain from the beginning. It doesn't make sense to me when we see some pure evil lunatic switch sides just because they meet the protagonist. Instead, I'd like to see complex and flawed villain who clearly struggles with their decisions, who eventually overcomes these flaws. I agree and I've seen several comments like this of when a villain is changed because of a person. Now, we talked earlier about a villain getting a found family or a friend group and then slowly being changed over that way, but having the main character do a compelling monologue convincing you out of your actions, I will never believe that. If you have two people that are against each other and the villain is trying to kill the main hero and then the main hero says, but you can do it, I believe in you, you're good. And the villain says, hmm, you're right. Never will that ever be good. Make them actively regret their past and make an effort to change the wrongs they did. Most redemption arcs uh, I see is just the person turning nice because they fell in love, never actually acknowledging that they were a bad person to begin with. Also, don't beat us over the head with it. I like redemption arcs that are subtly done. When the villain is forced to team up with the good guys and, they're, and they slowly switch perspectives and you just notice it slightly by the way they act or the things they say. So I read this one specifically because they brought up the love interest, another redemption arc that I don't like. If this person is bad, but then they fall in love with someone good and then change their lives. Man, I've read this so many times where I am following an evil character and they're evil evil arc is really compelling and I would be fine with them staying evil the entire book, but then they fall in love and then just boom, they're good is so frustrating. I don't like it when the person is redeemed because they're in love and the love changes them, unless it's something really, really gradual once again. But even then, that's a hard one for me to swallow. I want you to choose what's right in your life and not just go with it because you're in love with someone on the other side. Again, I guess it can be done well, but you gotta take your time and I gotta see that person actually really make a mental shift and it's not all wrapped up in love. No big moment where they can make one choice and be fully redeemed. Have small moments, small choices to change their language and manner or mannerisms perhaps. Show the slow change that turns them away from their previous ideology. Have to gain trust with good guys, not just immediately after one thing. Perfect. Absolutely love when you see the side characters arc through the main character's eyes, watching a friend completely change, but sticking with them all the same. This is interesting. I think I mostly, I'm comfortable with a dual point of view for uh, an arc, and I'm comfortable with just seeing the villain's point of view. I, I don't really think much about watching a redemption arc through someone else's eyes exclusively, but I do think that that would be valuable to see also the another character watching the little moments that we can only gain if we're only in the villain's perspective as he's changing, then we're gonna get a lot of inner monologues and self-reflection, which I think is really important. But watching little actions and little shifts in the way they respond to people or the way they handle things or even watching them clinch up and get angry at something and then like let out a breath and let it go. Watching that character growth secondhand can also be really, really impactful. Kind of seeing their internal struggle and their initial reactions and then their choices from the outside I think can be just as impactful as watching it all happen in their head. An interesting redemption arc I don't remember ever seeing is when a character tries to redeem themselves but still suffer the consequences from past choices, i.e. a villain 
Making enemies in the past redeems themselves with good acts, but the hero kills them anyway. This is an interesting concept and one I don't think I've ever seen. And it doesn't even have to be necessarily the villain dying in the end still because of their bad actions. But I do really like the idea of the villain having such extreme consequences, whether it be the main character still doesn't forgive them and they never make amends and they never become friends, or if it's something like um, allies that the villain made previously that now they can't escape and and they can't let them know that they've turned sides, or I don't know. I, I do like the idea of external forces that they've put into place now causing very extreme consequences even after they're redeemed. Not everything ends up being where people eventually accept them or anything, but sometimes those those consequences of, of the lifestyle that they chose will continue to stay with them and will never be reversed even over time. I like that idea a lot. I'm gonna end it on this. I hate when authors take really interesting villains who have depth and personality and do a redemption arc on them and change their personalities completely. They should experience some sort of change, but not to the point where they're unrecognizable as the same character. I really like this one because I, I've i seen this happen before um, and it is really unsatisfying where they are one character and they're a really compelling character as a villain and then they switch sides and then they turn into a Mary Sue and they're just so very boring all of a sudden. If you're more interesting as a villain than you are as a hero, it's a bad arc. I need to maintain your personality and maintain the characteristics that made you who you were. You're obviously gonna, the character's gonna change a lot with the redemption, but they should still be recognizable as the same complex, layered, interesting, compelling character and not just suddenly become the most bland character in the world because they're good now. I'm gonna end the video here because almost all of the comments that came in had spoilers in them. I'm gonna have to censor some of these comments, like parts of the comments, because almost everybody had some sort of spoiler in it. And I just don't, I don't know what people have read and watched and I, I don't, I don't wanna do that. But a lot of the comments were nothing but, this is an example and like saying the names and, and reciting the sources. So I couldn't use those at all. So I wasn't able to actually read very many comments for this one, but I did read through all of them that didn't include spoilers for things that I actively want to read or watch. And it seems like the main themes that came up in this one were really, really strongly believing that people do not want to see the redemption happen of one great act and then they're dead. That's something that a lot of people hate and are saying, don't do that. So that's a bad one. A lot of comments saying, take your time, do not make it rush, do not make it a 180 change. And then a lot of comments about showing consequences. I also got quite a few comments of people saying, make sure that it's a redeemable action and not an irredeemable action. Um, and then they gave examples of what they think are unredeemable. I personally uh, think that everybody is redeemable. Everybody has the opportunity for redemption, no matter what they've done. That doesn't mean that any acts are excusable, but I, I do believe that redemption arcs should be accessible to anyone. So I didn't read off any of those uh, because I don't agree with it, but that is a factor. I'm going to put it up there. Some people do consider some acts completely unredeemable, so it doesn't matter if you attach a redemption arc to certain characters, they, they won't take it. But I think the main theme here I will say that Avatar is the series that came up the most and a certain character in that series of like the best example of a redemption arc. And I'm gonna be experiencing that soon because I'm almost done with season one of Avatar and I will be doing a video on it when I'm done with it. Um, I know the redemption doesn't happen in season one. But anyway, if you want to see a great redemption arc done, apparently go watch Avatar. But this seems to be the main point that people are making. The main thing that people don't like is abrupt redemptions, make it happen over time, make a lot of consequences, make it a difficult day by day choice with moment by moment actions. Redemption arcs do not need to happen in every book or every series. And if you choose to do it, you better devote time to it. So that's my video on redemption arcs for characters. Be sure to continue chatting with me about it in the comments or check out the community post where there are a lot more comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon.